I'm Sarah Lowther and welcome to the latest London South East CEO interview. Today I'm joined by Brett Boynton, Chief Executive of Tectonic Gold, the specialist intrusion related gold system explorer. Now the acronym we'll be using a lot is IRGS. Now the company is developing technology to identify and delineate IRGS systems with a focus on a portfolio of projects in the prolific New England, Oregon Gold Belt in Queensland, Australia. Now, just recently, the Aqua Stock Exchange has promoted the company to the apex segment of the AQSC growth market. More on the significance of that later. So, Brett, IRGS was a topic, a topic limited largely to the academics in the early 2000s, but now it started to be recognized as a major source of world gold production. How is Tectonic a pioneer in this space? Well, that's right, Sarah. So uh, going back to the early 2000s, uh, it was really a few people in Canada, a few people in Australia uh, sort of talking about this and, and having a rethink about the geology of uh, some of these areas where we've had major gold discoveries. Um, and, and the problem we're always trying to solve with uh, gold exploration is the easy to find stuff has been found. We now need to think about how we're going to find the next generation of large discoveries. And so uh, this thinking about uh, intrusive related gold systems, uh, plate tectonics, uh, and, and these um, kind of uh, broader geological discussions uh, started to filter into mainstream uh, commercial activity. And we were onto it pretty early. Some of our geologists were uh, heavily involved with that uh, kind of academic research. And uh, that's a thematic that, that we picked up on in, in the 90s. Uh, my co-founder of, uh, of the company had um, a very interesting gold discovery, which uh, turned out to be one of these IGS uh, players. And we said, well, I, th I think we can find more of these in the belt that we're in, uh, but how are we going to do it? We need to use different technologies. We can't uh, use the old kind of, you know, poke a hole in, it, uh, in the ground with a, uh, with a drill because that's very expensive. We need to think about how we can start to uh, use modern technology to go after these. So we adopted some technology from the oil and gas industry who are very good at looking very deep underground. Um, and we, we co-opted some of their thinking. And um, there, there was quite a collaborative effort between uh, Australian academics and companies like ourselves. Uh, the Australian government gave us significant funding to, uh, to uh, do research and development in this uh, exploration technology. And, uh, and then we got, got out into the field and started to test it. So that's what we're doing now. We've been uh, you know, working up these projects. We're now drilling to prove them up. And, uh, you know, touch wood, we've had uh, great success so far. So effectively, the Australian federal government is a, is a co-investor, allowing you to take sort of first pick of the tenements. So where are they, these tenements, and what potential do they have? Sure. So uh, round numbers, we, we say, look, the, the big boys that we are uh, trying to develop these projects to trade up to, uh, they like to see 3 million ounces. That's our target. We need to see that a system has potential for 3 million ounces of gold. Um, so the, the belt we're in is home to some of the largest uh, gold companies globally and the, and the largest gold companies in Australia. So uh, the Cadia uh, project, which is Newcrest's flagship project, that's at the sort of southern end of this tectonic belt, and uh, we we're also in the neighbourhood with uh, players like Evolution. More recently, we've seen some of the copper players start to come into the belt. So, uh, you know, our geologists uh, tell us that they run into geologists from Rio Tinto and, and South 32, also working in the area. And certainly a great excitement for us is uh, about 12 months ago, Rio picked up a very large uh, piece of ground right on our northern boundary. So they're looking at uh, the same type of geology as we're looking at. Uh, we're a gold explorer primarily, um, and they're a copper explorer pri primarily, but actually the systems produce copper gold uh, polymetallic um, uh, deposits. So um, we're, we're excited to see uh, more of the bigger names come into this belt. And it really runs through the east coast of Australia. So um, 
uh, in if, for a lot of uh, investors, they'd be more familiar with uh, coal um, mines in that uh, in that region. Um, but we're in uh, in a belt that is a prolific host of um, uh, of large scale gold deposits. So again, those three million ounce plus numbers. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so uh, you've mentioned Rio Tinto and Evolution there. You're stressing that you're an explorer, but you're wanting to trade up your tenements. So therefore, are you wanting to sell on to the majors or are you wanting to, to have a partnership with them? What's the exit strategy from these prol prolific tenements? Sure, so uh, really it's the best outcome for the shareholders. How can we generate the best return for the shareholders? What we've seen uh, in, in the Australian context, you've got um, players like uh, Gold Road that have done very well by partnering with uh, large international players. And uh, one of the uh, London listed stocks, Greatland Gold, similarly has um, worked as an exploration company, uh, developed some ground, made discovery, um, uh, worked up the initial resource and then brought in a larger partner. These, these deposits are, are large and they take a large balance sheet and a large technical team to bring into production. So our ambition is to certainly remain a, uh, a partner or at least have an economic interest uh, as we go forward. But really uh, the expertise that we bring to the table is the earlier stage, the finding it, delineating it uh, and getting it to a project development stage. Now, there's nothing better than a drilling program to uh, really revitalize a share price. Now, I know that um, International Drilling Services Group, Tightline Drilling, they're backing you. That's a strong endorsement. So what are you leading up to, the pair of you? Well, we've uh, been running a drilling program uh, either side of the holidays. So we, we got into uh, into the ground in no November, prepped um, and got a, a drilling program going on one portion of our tenements uh, before Christmas. We then took a pause, um, had some Christmas cheer and some Christmas cake, had a look at the early results. And that gave us uh, some ideas about um, uh, where we need to go back and, and, and how we need to extend that. And then we came back in the new year and went uh, to another area and, and drilled that out. Now, we, we look at drilling as the kind of last stage. That's the most expensive piece of the exploration program. So we've had uh, many years of uh, field campaigns uh, preparing to uh, to get into the drilling, and in fact, the uh, uh, the drilling in December was a follow up program to uh, to a program we ran in 2018-2019. So, what we delineated at surface and tested and proven, uh, and then we've brought in some of this uh, sort of deep penetrating. Uh, uh, geophysical uh, remote reconnaissance um, technology that we borrowed from the oil and gas industry. Um, we've delineated a five kilometer long mineralized zone. And within that, we started to drill out certain areas where we'd found gold at surface, and we're looking for continuation of that gold at depth. Uh, now, the important piece for us is we what we want to see is uh, sort of low cost, open pitable uh, mining opportunities. So uh, having a, a large, you know, five kilometer long strike, that's going to get the attention of, of the big players and showing that we've got gold from surface uh, down to significant depth that shows that we've got scale uh, again as well. And, and it's easy and cost effective to bring into production. So we've been focused on initially about an 800 meter long uh, sort of slice of that uh, uh, four or five kilometer long belt. And uh, within that, we've proven that we've got consistent mineralization through that 800 meter, that initial 800 meter uh, kind of belt. What we're looking at is a, um, a kind of a collision zone where there's a fault and we've mapped out the, the length of that fault and kind of hanging as a curtain, if you will, is the uh, mineralized uh, or uh, between these uh, these these two um, kind of blocks, so we've got this fault zone with a curtain hanging it. The curtain kind of bends and pinches and and swells, and that's what we're trying to follow the whole way uh, along the strike zone. So we've mapped it clearly at surface. Now we're looking for what happens at 50 meters, what happens at 100 meters, uh, and 
we, we know from uh, our testing and from looking at similar kinds of deposits around the world that these tend to be very vertically extensive uh, features. So they'll go to five, seven, uh, 100 meters easily and, and often uh, to over a thousand meters. So we're looking at um, you know, how do we cost effectively start to put some resource numbers up there and within that where do we find the highest grades so that we know where we can uh, start the mining. Okay so when can we expect to hear about results, assay results, drilling programs etc etc? Sure so we put some initial results out um, uh, from the, the first few holes and we're very pleased that we had a 100% accuracy in our targeting there. And we're getting some pretty good grades up to over 15 grams per ton. Um, keep in mind that it's not only about grade. Uh, Cadia, which is one of the lowest cost producers in, in uh, Australia, so that's Newcrest's Cadia mine, uh, they're mining it below one gram per ton. But because they have uh, copper and, and other credits in there as well. As we do, we have copper, silver, lead uh, alongside our gold. That brings their overall cost uh, to, to uh, uh, you know, industry leading all in sustaining cost of around $700 a ton. So whilst we're looking for high grade, um, we're actually very happy with anything above one gram per ton and uh, containing some copper as well. Uh, the cop is very important because we know that's what Rio is looking for and we'd, we'd like to get them to have a, a good discussion with us. So um, those initial results are out. Um, we've then taken the huge raft of uh, uh, samples behind that and we've put them through pre-screening. So it's quite expensive to send things off for assay. And uh, what we do is we use a, a technology called XRF um, and we say, right, these are our initial results. We know we've got good grade here. Let's put the XRF machine on here and calibrate it. And then we'll go and look at the rest of our samples. And so we're, we're working through uh, you know, over a thousand samples now where we pre-screen them. Then the ones that come up with the best response uh, from that pre-screening, we send those off for assay. So those will be into the labs for assay in the next couple of weeks. We've also just wrapped up uh, our second uh, drilling program and we put eight holes into an, another area and um, we'll have the initial results from those uh, over the next couple of weeks as well. So busy time for us, uh, a lot of analytical work to be done now and then we'll get back into the field and uh, carry on working methodically along that belt and extending that 800 meters out to 1000 meters, 2000 meters. And fingers crossed, uh, hopefully we find most of the four kilometer strike is mineralized. In terms of the strike zone, the strike zone could be the world because I'm just thinking that your tectonics unique skill that's being honed in Australia could be exported to a host of our IRGS systems around the world. Well, that's exactly right. So we talk about the ring of fire, which is uh, uh, the, the uh, I, I guess the tectonic belt that goes all the way around the Pacific. So the, we see these kinds of deposits, South America, uh, North America, uh, you know, through through the Andes into um, into the Rockies, into uh, the Tantina Belt in, in Canada, which is a prolific host of these uh, intrusive related gold systems, <clears throat> across into, into Russia and China. The North China Craton is an IRGS belt. Uh, it hosts about a third of Chinese gold production. Um, and then all the way down through through uh, Southeast Asia and ultimately through um, into, into Australia. Now, Australia is an ancient continent, so the uh, tectonic activity has, uh, has subsided here. It, it's a very stable continent now. But when we look very close to us uh, at somewhere like New Zealand or up into uh, PNG, then actually they, uh, those tectonic activities are still taking place. And that... Um, uh, you know, production of the uh, the gold mineralized uh, 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 ore zones is, is still happening, um, in and, and and that's quite exciting that we see, uh, you know, what we're looking for and drilling out now. We can actually see the the formation of the same kind of deposit in uh, in places where the tectonic activity is still current. Okay, finally, and just as exciting, you're currently listed on the AQS Stock Exchange. They've recently promoted you to the apex segment of the AQSC growth market. Uh, big endorsement there, but I'm just wondering, is this an important stepping stone to an ASX or a, a London listing or a dual listing? 
Certainly, we're always looking for the, uh, the best way to provide liquidity for the shareholders, so enhance the liquidity. And, uh, you know, potentially as we become, uh, let's say, have a larger appetite for capital as our, as our programs can scale, we, uh, we'd look at other opportunities, which may include a partnership with listed companies on those exchanges or, or looking to raise capital off, off those exchanges. But at the moment, we are incredibly pleased with the progress that, uh, that the, the team at Aquis has made. Uh, we've seen a lot more liquidity in our stock, certainly around announcements. We're getting a lot of trading in our stock now, um, and we've been very uh, well supported by shareholders there. We see um, some institutions now coming into to the market. So uh, for us, uh, ideally, we carry on doing what we're doing where we are, um, but certainly we're, um, we're open to opportunities uh, to, to look at other exchanges. Brett Boynton, Chief Executive of Tectonic Gold, thank you very, very, very much indeed for talking to us today. And the acronym, not just of the day, but of the year, I think, is IRGS. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sarah. You're very welcome. Well, thanks to Brett. Thanks to you for watching. You can find us on our Twitter feed, which is at London Southeast. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. And finally, do stay safe.